sick. Put this to music. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Whitey and Corpus, she's Taylor Curtis. And on the crowd goes wild on the Barlina. <laughs> Taylor joins the greatest bandwagon of them all. Yoo-hoo! Zoe is fast. Storm is Izzy is ready to flip the script in the UFC. And grassroots rugby, baby. All that plus super rugby and the twimmin. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the big juicy news story at the top of the show. <laughs> to a man. To a man, sorry. <laughs> to a man. <laughs> One of our Good greatest start. ever boxes. Ooh. It's the table, it's, thro- it's the disc, it's throwing us off. Look at this thing. It's really being downsized. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, it's budget cuts. <sighs> Leading like, your it. CGW tonight. Terrible, terrible news for the fans of the Black Caps. <laughs> The Black steady cow. ship has, yeah, yeah, the steady ship has been rocked. Yes, Captain Kane has ruptured his ACL. Remember this dodgy looking landing during the IPL opener over the weekend? Well, our worst fears have been confirmed. It's unlikely that he'll be available for the World Cup, but from our perspective, we certainly haven't given up hope on that. It's unlikely uh, that he'll be available for the World Cup, but from our perspective, we certainly haven't haven't given up hope on that. On your gas, but with ACL recoveries typically taking around 12 months and the Cricket World Cup being just six months away, at this stage, it does not look unlikely. But at this stage, it does look unlikely. You take Kane, the player, for a start, but then Kane, the leader, and, and the person he is within our group as well, then it's a, it's a huge um, spanner in the works for us. We're crying with you, Aotearoa. Elsewhere in the IPL, Trent Bolt and Rajasthan lost to the Punjab Kings today. But tune in tomorrow to see Lockie Ferguson, Tim Southey and Kolkata take on Bangalore's Michael Bracewell and Finn Allen. That wasn't a filter on James McCain's face, by the way. That's just his normal yeah. face most of the time. He looks like that all the time. Yeah, unless the Chiefs are winning, of course, and then it's upside down the other way. That's He's in his Chiefs gear yeah. and crying. <laughs> he misses them because they don't have a game this weekend. That's why. Uh, that's tough news. I mean, six months away is the World Cup. But, I mean, nine months on average. Have you done an ACL? No, luckily. Yeah, no. It is, it is a slow, slow, like, painstakingly slow process. So, yeah. uh, I don't think he makes it. But, I mean, his influence is probably still going to be there around World Cup time. Yeah. And we've Usually got some... bring in big dogs like that to come in and do a little yarn, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> he'd just be out there just peppering them with, like, advice and... Leading the way from the sidelines. Yeah. Oh, gutted. Do, wait, do, does cricket have sidelines? I don't know. <laughs> the right. Warriors definitely have sidelines, and the Warriors have won four from five so far, and everyone is jumping on the bandwagon, including everyone in this office, right? Taylor Curtis? Yeah, well, I've actually been a fan since day one, thank you. Here's proof from when I paid my boys a visit. Day one, baby! Um, See, I haven't seen you here. Well, they always bring boys <laughs> usually. Isn't that what usually happens? How we started winning, you come over, eh? You just want to join in. Uh, is that bloody obvious? <laughs> nah, whatever, I'm day one. Everyone knows me out here. You're gonna leave the, are you going to leave the thing on too? <laughs> so normally day ones don't have tags on their stuff. OK, I've been found out, but who wouldn't jump on the bandwagon after that epic win over the Sharks? Walk us through your reaction seeing that kick go over. Oh, it was just a unreal feeling, to be honest. Uh, it's probably the best comeback game I've ever played in. You know, Shawnee, the leader he is, he took that kick and he got it in. It was an awesome feeling too, so yeah. I'm not even sweat that much, but it was one of those games where you start sweating, you start panicking and jumping all over the shop, so it was, it was good to get the win. Since I'm on the wagon for the long haul, I reckon I'd better learn the league lingo. So what is uh, shape? Shape is just an attacking play. It's just giving options where it's a lead or, or back door. Back door? <laughs> no, I really don't know. You heard that one. Oh. You made that one up yourself. Out the back shape. Oh, yeah, right, eh? Who's making up these questions? <laughs> these wise questions. You're out of the car. If you're yelling, find your front, what's that? It's just trying to create rock speed. It's just trying to get a quick play the ball. Can lead into a shape and ah. you can score a try. So, yeah. So that's Gotta it. find your front to get to shape. Yeah, yeah. Crack out four. You've played the Newcastle Knights before. What do you take from that game going into this one? they got some big forwards. Big forwards and fast outside backs. I guess it starts up front, trying not to let them find their front, put them on their back, and it minimises um, the space and the amount of ball that the outsides get. 
There'll be plenty more wins this year, so I wonder, how do they feel about those jumping on the bandwagon? we we got a few of them now. Appreciate them, as long as they support us all the way. Uh, if you want a bandwagon, bandwagon. Just make sure you remove the tags, eh? Yeah, yeah. just yeah. remove the tags if you are going to bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> Am I officially? Almost. Yeah. So almost. There you go. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you've been supporting the Warriors all this time. It's it's <laughs> great to have you as a day one Warrior supporter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember, like back in like the 2000s when we had that like that iconic song that the followed point. us everywhere. What was that one again? How did that go? Um, something about faith, matter of faith. Yeah. How? how yeah, how, did it, how did it go again? Day one, please. Um, I remember the 1995 when they ran out flames. But when you say you remember that when you were three years old, you remember I wasn't that. even born. <laughs> <laughs> I was a 1996 baby. Ah, uh, matter of faith. A matter of faith. No, welcome, bandwagoners. We love you. Stay on board for the long haul. It is definitely our year. I do prefer your crowds. Hey. I'm just saying it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're cooler. <laughs> I don't know whose idea of a joke this is. Why does she get to do the Warriors train and I have to read the Super Rugby News? Anyway, Crusaders take on MP tomorrow night for Richie's hundy, but Razor had some kind words about me, of all people. He's cheeky, he's humorous. Sometimes he's taking the piss out of people and you don't even know <laughs> until afterwards. Oh. This is getting a little bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Canes take on the Inform Highlanders. That's a typo. But Aidan Morgans is really itching for a nah, wonder why. Nah, Ants my pants. A uh, bit tough watching from the sideline. I want to um, want to get out there as much as I can. So, yeah, good to be back. Ahead of the clash against the Rebels, Dalton is convinced they'll find the missing eggs from the Blues Easter egg, egg hunt. It's not all panic stations, you know, we, we actually know we're, we're just there, we just need to, if we're gonna, if we're gonna make it, we just need to find those, you know, one or two that we're not, we're missing. It's under the pot plant for sure. Say sarcastically, and Chiefs have a buy their Brad Webber, it's hard at training mm, Okay, fair enough. Sorry, I'm just gonna go ahead and just not listen. Damn, short, just like me. Yeah, we love a short King Brad. Oh, that's going to be good. It's what's what, going to be good? Which, what's, what's going to be good? <laughs> well, uh, well, there's only two um, New Zealand derbies, I guess. Well, there's Moana Crusaders, Richie Moonga's at 100. They've Hurricanes got, Highlanders. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. the Hurricanes, they're a bit like, they've got to figure out where they sit. Because at the moment, they look pretty, but they haven't been tested too much. Mm. Like, they've had the, kind of an easier draw, whereas the Highlanders, well, we all know what happened there, but... I mean, just, I'm, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I just want the Blues to win again. Uh, and they're up against the Rebels, who have... Aren't they great this year? So, yeah. yeah, maybe they can actually string a full 80 performance and put the ball down. Oh, <laughs> I just remembered about the um, the stepping on the sideline thing last week. Yeah. Everyone does that. Remember Sonny Bull when he stepped on the... <laughs> when he slipped. Right, after the break, Storm tries to twist the tongue of our fastest runner. Poor Cole content. Great. And there was soccer on today. Seamus Power from Waterford in Ireland. This is at the eighth. And that is tracking. And it's tracking. And it's a hole in one. Yeah, Seamus Power is with a sick hole in one in the Masters Par 3 contest today. And it wasn't just the luck of the Irish. This happened at the very next hole. Tracking. Oh my goodness. Tracking. Oh, yeah. hey, wow. How good. Man, Brilliant. That's awesome. Uh, Ryan Fox as well plays in his debut Masters tomorrow. I know. It's massive. Very, very exciting. Yeah, I think yeah. he plays fourth in that tournament too. With his dad as his caddy. Yeah, well, oh, in the par three course. But yeah, yeah he starts at like 4 30 a.m. I, I don't think, think I want my dad as my caddy. Annoying. Anyway, <laughs> unless you've Tell been you living what. under a rock, which I completely understand because rent is ridiculous, ridiculous these days. The name Zoe Hobbs is one you've probably heard a lot lately. After running the 100 metres in under 11 seconds, not once, but twice this season, we insisted on sitting down with her. But as you can imagine, she's been in hot demand. And yes, OK, we're a bit late to the party, but yeah, just roll the bloody tape. Irish wristwatch, Swiss wish rock. <laughs> Irish wit. <laughs> Iris, 
Irish. <laughs> Irish. Oh my god, <laughs> this is too much. You're I give up. You're doing so well. I know. Saying Irish wristwatch, Swiss wristwatch, really fast may be tough for Zoe Hobbs, but running really fast certainly isn't. Wow, Zoe Hobbs has broken 11 seconds. Please let it stay there, and it has. It's been rounded down to 10.97. In your own words, how would you describe the last month or so? Uh, crazy. It's been overwhelming. Um, a lot to process in a short space of time. We didn't expect to run that fast so soon, um, but it's really exciting for my team and I to be in that position now and we hope to build on it. Zoe and her team have been chipping away at her technique for a while now and she's finally reaping the rewards. Nerd out with me for just a second. There's two different strengths that sprinters can play on and my strength is the cadence side of things. Other sprinters yeah, so a bit more rapid, um, quicker turnover, and then others' strength could be the stride length, but that's not been my traditional strength. Um, so we've really tried to channel getting more out of my, my length and my stride. So I think I read four less strides per 100 metres at the moment? Yeah, I think roughly. We've been tracking that data for quite some time now. Um, this has been since high school, I think we've been looking at that. So it's been over several years that it's changed. Yeah, there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes and technical changes. It's quite hard to change things technically when you're working at 110% as well, so yeah. And all this happens in under 11 seconds. Our domestic season may be over, but for Zoe, her season is just heating up. She's off to the Doha Diamond League next month, where she'll be racing against the global superstars of the sport, like Jamaica's Shelley Fraser-Price. I think running in New Zealand is going to be a lot different to you know, May when I line up against that, that competition because the likes of Shelley is going to be out ahead of me. But I've got to get used to relaxing next to that and not sensing up because I think that's been a big part of what's allowed me to run so well this domestic season. I, I went in very relaxed. There was no pressure at all. I think it's proved that how much, how much relaxing can do to your form. Well, let's put it to the test. Irish wristwatch, Swiss wristwatch. That wasn't very fast. <laughs> Storm Purvis, crowd goes wild. Do it quickly, uh, do it, do it. That's Irish wristwatch, Swiss wristwatch. That's nah. not too bad, that's too bad. I saw Man, it. I wonder if potentially she could do that at that pace with a league ball under her arm on the wing for an NRLW team. Yeah, well, Sevens have already tried to poach her, but she's like not, yeah, she's not really? interested yet. Oh, man. We gotta wait. <laughs> if she could play for us. All right, to the glass case of emotions now, also known as the squash court, where Paul Cole was about to defend his British Open title in Birmingham this weekend. And let's not forget last time he was there, he won a couple of Com Games gold medals, but up till two weeks ago when he won the Canary Wharf Classic, Paul found the pressure of being number one affecting his game. Stroke to make it, he never said it. You know, I achieved probably, you know, three of my my biggest career goals within a very short amount of time. It was a whole new pressure for me being, obviously at the top, being one. It wasn't something I've ever had in my career before. It's hard being the best and staying there, eh, why? Yes, indeed. And thankfully for Paul, he seems he's figured it out. I went back to how I got to one, you know, just when I was eight in the world or 10 in the world, just playing playing the squash that got me there and not trying to not trying to be anyone else but just, you know, um, a little kid from Greymouth. It's a great boast. Unlike why, he finds his namaste playing Hitty Walkie and his bets are on Foxy for the Masters this weekend. When I have a mental breakdown on the squash court, the golf's the first thing that uh, that saves me. So I'll be tuning in this week. I've got my I've got my bets down. I've got Foxy for top 30, so no doubt he's going to come through for me. Pressure is on, Ryan Fox. Ooh. Right, our grassroots footy is the bloody backbone of this country, but the small town of Reporoa is home to not only Sam Kane and Scott Curry, but also one of our very own. Yeah, so our, we sent our rural reporter Fitz heading to his old stomping ground to get the scoop. Was it just an excuse for a trip home? Mm. HR thinks so, and now Fitz has a written warning. Mm. Four years ago, you know, we were, we, we were top of the table, we, we won it, we can get back there, we just got to work on it, get the boys here and, and get it done. Who doesn't love a grassroots rugby comeback story? And it doesn't get any better than this. It's a little more red bands than uh, RMs at Reparoa Rugby Club, and they've dealt with some peaks and troughs. Farm pun. Been a little bit gutted last year, there was no team, but um, it is what it is. I had to go into town, like Rotorua, to go play rugby. We've got a team this year, and we're proving that we were here, ready to go. It's a club that's close to my heart. And this year, everyone's getting stuck in, even if it means being a little late. I heard one of the boys, he came off in the second half because he had to go milking. There was two of them actually, there was actually two of them. 
yeah, our prop and our winger. They were meant to go at halftime, they, they gave us another 10 minutes and then they took off, so yeah. Rocked up first week, 15 players turned up and they're like, oh, you're starting. And then by the end of the game, we had about 20 total, five sitting on the bench. So a few boys jumped off the sideline, put the beers down, picked up the boots and hooked into it. Uh, just trying to get everyone down to trainings and that Thursdays. Pretty hard working around milkings and stuff with all the boys milking it. They don't finish till five or six, some of them, and that's when we start training. Yeah, it's basically cow shed, play rugby back to the cow shed for us. The local fur reps, I figured I'd better jump in and, and play with the boys and hopefully a few of them start buying a bit of product. But it's not just fur reps and farmers. There have been some big names that have pulled on the green and white. Yeah, well, these, these young kids here are all well aware of, of the influence that Sam's had on our community and, and the Curry boys. You know, Sam played all his JB out here on this field. I spent the whole day trying to chase down the two coaches. Just two questions. But it turns out they just needed a bit of liquid courage. Born and bred here, played all my footy and rep raw. I'll do all I can to keep, keep, the, keep the team on the park. We're not here for ourselves, we're just here to see somewhere for our community to go to. Young fellas, old fellas, all coming back, having a laugh. The rural community based itself around the club. Car parks full, people everywhere, and there'll be a few beers, I'm sure, in the clubhouse tonight. It's Peanut and uh, Jack from Dickies Direct, third year, signing off for Craig Goes Wild. Up to green and white. Uh, if you haven't seen it, the ground we won, it's awesome documentary about Reporua Rugby. Right, it's still to come on the show. Team is your day, baby. And who blew the bloody doors off this morning? Going good. Right up. Predator is one of my favourite movies, partly for the awkwardly long handshake at the start that became a meme, but mainly because I'm a huge fan of the hunter becoming the hunted. And that theme is exactly what Israel Adesanya will be looking to channel as he looks to win back his middleweight title against Alex Pereira at the USC 287 on Sunday. I'm the hunter now. I've just been hunting. Like, in every sense of the word, and I make, I'll make sure, like, when it's time to fight, I'll hunt him down. I'm not sure if Izzy will walk out covered in mud, but he does seem to share the laser focus of Predator Arnold Schwarzenegger in his quest to beat the big, scary Brazilian. And he's got no time for distractions. Like, legit, who is... Sorry, it's just distracting. <laughs> it's, it's spanned across... The... Can you guys keep it quiet in the back, please? Whoever is there, opening the door. Sorry, I'm trying to think. The pair fought last in November, with Pereira winning via stoppage in the fifth round. He has this special ability to recover and put his foot on the gas, so I have to find a way to take, take him out of the driver's seat, which I will. Yeah, Izzy is looking to take Alex out of the driver's seat and bark all the way back to the belt. Like an excited dog outside a dog park in the car. Yeah, totally. Uh, my dog ate my mum's spaghetti the other night and its arms were weak, knees were heavy. Wait, dogs don't have arms or knees, do they? This is my Eminem moment, my 8 mile moment, you know. You get one shot, do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime and this is it. But unlike 8 Mile, Izzy's writing a horror movie on Sunday. What if I get it done better than he's ever done it? What if I butcher him and beat the f*** out of him? Sounds kind of gross, but I'm into it. And we're all behind you, Izzy. Gonna be watching this Sunday, bro. Go hard. We're backing you all the way, brother. Shout out to the Uso Israel Asanya. Wow, well, you're gonna f*** him up, you know? Shout out to Israel Asanya, eh? My man. I know you're looking forward to going out there and just smash him, man. Right, Paul, my dear. Crowd goes wild. To a man. Man, that's massive. To a man. Yeah, to a man, yeah. yeah that, that was him, by the way. Yeah, no, I, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah no, he, I mean, huge weekend for him. I mean, he, he has said this is his moment. This is his opportunity. This is probably his last opportunity. Yeah. But then, you know, the, if he wins, they'll have to go again, which is was sort of big money, but do Ooh, people want to see that? Again? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. also, he hasn't had a fight since the last time they faced each other. No, they usually don't and fight in between. Like you were mentioning off the break, it was a very short turnaround. So yeah, relative, relatively short. Is that turnaround. normal? I mean, four or five months here is about, about right. You know, like I think they would have already had it in their agreement that they, like whoever won, might have got a challenge, or especially Izzy, yeah. being that he lost. But yeah, that's, that's about right. So is, it not is it normal to not have a fight leading into it? Nah. Or oh, Okay. Well, 
I Izzy mean, the, the champ might fight in between, but maybe not Izzy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it'd have a longer time to prepare for it. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's going to be huge anyway. Book it. Book it, guys. Yeah, this Sunday. Well, forget Arsenal and Man City, forget Klopp and Kane, and the big star story of the English Premier League season are Newcastle United. Hoa the lads! Hands up if you love the Magpies. Of course you do, Karen. And you were a big part of the 5 1 win at West Ham. But only for a moment, St Maximan driving back in. It's a perfect start for Newcastle United. Newcastle have never won the Premier League and finished 11th last season. Now they're on target to make the Champions League. So here's some Newcastle music to celebrate. Oh, again, caught in possession and run right at the start of the second half. Just kept the pressure on. Yeah, the Knopfler brothers are Geordie boys. Also today, Marcus Rashford scored his 15th goal of the season to give Manchester, Manchester United a 1-0 win over Brentford. Man U are third as well, but miles behind Newcastle on goal difference. Um, <laughs> What's up with me? <laughs> <laughs> Chris Wood, apparently, with James Kane is telling me, Chris Wood is only on loan at the moment. So technically, you can go back to Newcastle and play in the Champions League, Ooh. which could be quite big for him. Yeah. yeah. Sort of mental shift. But he's at Nottingham Forest. Mm. Yeah. All right. Finally, tonight, with the fight for life fast approaching, two of Peach Jim's unbeaten fighters were sent an offer they can't refuse. No, not a private tour of CGW office, no, but rather good. a private training session with the boxing royalty, David Tua. Man. <laughs> when you want to be the best, who better to learn from than the legend himself, David Tua? What was it like smacking the champ, mate? Yeah, that, that was awesome, man. It was crazy kind of doing it with him. You know, it's first time I've been in his gym, first time doing pads with him. I never thought I'd be punching him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of us would uh, think about punching David Tua. No, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, that's my one and only opportunity. <laughs> Why not take it up, right? So I always have to tell him, hey, not too low, man, not too low. <laughs> But certainly, you know, good on them. They go for it. Yeah, very, very strong and good body shots here. Yeah. Do you miss it? Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. But I love teaching. It's an honor to break bread, you know, with these young champions coming through. Unbeaten Mia Mutu headlines the Fight for Life Bill, taking a shot at her first world title against Canadian Tania Walters. I'm bloody excited and ready to go. Let's go. Bring on the rumble. <laughs> Certainly another um, amazing opportunity for other female boxers to, to be inspired uh, by what she's doing, what she's trying to achieve. And IBF Australasian double belt holder Jerome has his eyes on the bigger prize too. Knowing in the back of my mind winning this fight and doing so well in this fight, this can project me to, to bigger fights and obviously the goal is to be a world champion. What's your feeling about Jerome as a boxer? Amazing talent, young talent coming through. He's obviously um, encouraging a lot of other young amateurs coming through the ranks that you know maybe they don't have to go as far as like the Olympics or Commonwealth Games to turn pro. These guys are both fighting in in a charity gig. These things seem to be a big part of New Zealand now. Are they important to the boxing world as well? Definitely. It's almost becoming part of our culture. It's an opportunity to give back. It's an opportunity for others to give boxing a try and see if it's a sport for them. Good thing for boxing, absolutely. Yeah. Catch the Fight for Life on April the 27th, live on Sky Arena and Sky Sport Now. Josh Gronfeld, crowd goes wild. Jerome had the opportunity to spar or do some work with David too, and he forgot his shoes. Oh. He literally forgot his shoes. Did you see him in bare feet? Doesn't look like he needs them. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look good. Uh, 27th of April is that fight for life as well. Yeah. So, yeah, get on board. A big weekend of sport, guys. Warriors, Knights over there. Ooh. Hurricanes. Ringer, here Hur we go. Hurricanes have, have a good Easter. Hey, look out for our desk on Trade Me. I think somebody stole it, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's tiny. Oh! Yeah. Goodness, man. This is sick. Put